Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, my name is Tanya and I'm an English teacher in Polyglot. In my previous video, I already talked about myself and the five languages I'm currently studying, so if you guys want to know a little bit more about it, check that one out. In this video, I'm going to be talking about books. Reading is such a big part of my life, honestly. I've been consuming so much literature in the last few years, and I just feel like it's never, never enough. Plus, some of you may already have guessed which books I'm going to be talking about today because... just because. Because I talk about books literally just everywhere, and especially my favorite ones. These three books I'm going to be talking about today are actually not just my favorite ones, but first of all the ones that changed my life, my personality, and just who I am. It doesn't happen very often, by the way, but when it does, it always hits the spot. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. And the first book is None Other Than Circe by Madeline Miller. This story is essentially about a daughter of Helios, god of the sun, who is thought to possess no power and only exist in the shadows. However, soon enough, it turns out that she actually does possess one, and this is the power of witchcraft, which can transform rivals into monsters and even menace the gods. As a form of punishment, she's banished to a deserted island where she hones her witchcraft skills and meets other important figures in all of mythology. And so, this book is essentially about how she's trying to find herself in her exile. Many of you already know that I've always been a huge fan of Greek mythology. But it's not the main reason why I enjoyed this book so much. I guess the more accurate answer would be that I just found this book at the right time. I was actually going through a very challenging period in my life, and I honestly didn't really know anything about the book before getting into it, and guess what? Of course I ended up not being able to put it down just because I was so engrossed in the story. I just felt like this book kind of reached out to me in the time when I needed it most. Madeline Miller actually did such a wonderful job in developing her character and keeping the narrative quiet but still focused on Cersei. What I love the most about this novel is that, well, obviously she's struggling a lot on the story, but the greatest thing about watching her struggle is how relatable that all is. Because yes, she is an immortal, she is a goddess, she is a witch. But at the same time, she's just a woman who's lived long enough under the pressure of powerful men and who is just trying to find her own way and place in this world. And maybe that's what really drew me in. Cersei is not just a goddess living a life of isolation. Her actions and her emotions show all this wide range of human emotions like love, regret, compassion, determination, vengeance. She's also extremely courageous and super protective. You can literally feel throughout the whole book how she's ready to encounter all those dark creatures and mighty gods in order to protect her family. And also throughout the whole book she's growing as a character. With every obstacle she's becoming stronger and not only in her skills of witchcraft but also in herself. And this is one of my favorite tropes actually. I understand why I love this book so much. I truly love watching the main character grow and improve, learn some hard lessons and grow again as a person. The writing, as I said, is just next level. Let me just read you one of my favorite quotes, okay? Daedalus did not long outlive his son. His limbs turned gray and nerveless and all his strength was transmuted into smoke. I had no right to claim him, I knew it. But in a solitary life, there are rare moments when another soul dips near yours as stars once a year brush the earth. Such a constellation was he to me." So yeah, if you haven't read it, please fix that. I really don't know what will top this for me. Nothing, I guess. The second book here on the list is The Cold Bench by Donna Tartt. The story follows Theo Decker, a 13-year-old boy who survives a terrorist bombing in an art museum in which his mother dies. While trying to find a way out of the museum, he stumbles upon an old man who makes Theo take this painting, the goldfinch. Being left alone because Theo was also abandoned by his father, he's going through a series of tragedies and misadventures together with this painting which becomes his secret treasure and at the same time his burden. So this is a coming of age story which raises some important issues like the value of art and the value of human life, loss, grief, friendship, and love. I read this book about 
four years ago, but my impressions are still so fresh and so vivid as if I finished this book just yesterday. First of all, as you may also have guessed, this story is a little bit like Cersei because it's also like a coming of age story. We see the person in point A first and then follow them till they reach point B. So we basically watch them changing and becoming completely different versions of themselves. And I love that so much because, well, this is what life is all about, right? This book is so beautifully written and so well crafted. I remember that it took me around two months to finish it, but it was this type of book where the destination is not so important as the journey, as they say. It was a deeply absorbing and quite sad story about a person who is just coming to terms with his grief and loss and trying to find his way in the world and just making one bad decision after another. However, not all the emotions here are centered around loss and some bad experiences. Friendship is also one of the main themes of the book. And here is this friendship between Theo and Boris, who is half Ukrainian and half Polish. and. Yeah, so these two boys just become inseparable. They experience a whole lot of things together and Boris will also re-enter Theo's life in adulthood. Actually, there is one more important thing which made me fall in love with this book. And this is the writer's thoughts on art which take a decent amount of pages at the end of the book. As I mentioned before, throughout the whole novel, Theo is strongly fixated on this small painting, the Goldfinch. We see that his entire life revolves around it, because it also reminds him of his mother, and it basically becomes the only beautiful and priceless thing in the world, which is his and his alone. Now, the Goldfinch was painted in 1654 by Carl Fabricius, and it shows a goldfinch perching on top of a feeder, and we can also see that the bird is kept in captivity because there is like a thin chain attached to its leg. By the way, one more interesting fact, the painter was also killed in the enormous explosion, and many of his paintings were lost too. The goldfinch was painted in the year of his death, and it's one of a few of his surviving works. And I honestly think that this painting can be interpreted in so many different ways, but what I personally see here is like an allegory of freedom chained, which almost goes hand in hand with the storyline. And here I'd also like to share one of my favorite quotes from the book. But what does the painting say about Fabrizius himself? Nothing about religious or romantic or familial devotion. Nothing about civic awe or career ambition or respect for wealth and power. There is only tiny heartbeat and solitude, bright sunny wall and a sense of no escape. Time that doesn't move, time that couldn't be called time. And trapped in the heart of light, the little prisoner, unflinching. It can never have understood why it was forced to live in such misery, bewildered by noise, distressed by smoke, Barking dogs, cooking smells, teased by drunkards and children, tethered to fly on the shortest of chains. Yet even a child can see its dignity, thimble of bravery, of fluff and brittle bone, not timid, not even hopeless, but steady and holding its place, refusing to pull back from the world. I don't even want to comment on that. You know, after I finished it, I honestly didn't even want to read anything else because I knew that nothing would compete. And by the way, you can imagine how impressed I was that I even made a copy of the painting. I painted my own goldfinch. So yeah, perfect read. 5 out of 5. And the third book on this list, which I love and adore, is The Fountainhead. This is a novel by Russian-American author Ayn Rand. The main character here is Howard Rourke who is a young, idealistic architect and who battles against conventional standards. He is expelled from a prestigious architectural university for his unconventional designs and is opposed by architectural critics and just the whole traditional society which is unwilling to accept innovation. And there is also this woman he meets, Dominique Francon. She is a passionate idealist who worships human greatness and creative genius, but she's also convinced that such greatness is doomed to defeat in a world ruled by the mediocre. So the two form an immediate and passionate connection, and together they embody one question that the book raises, pursuing your passion and achieving your happiness regardless of what society may think. 
You know, I do like all those ideas which Ayn Rand presents in her novels. And The Fountainhead, this is one of those rare books which stays with you a long time after you finished it. And it also makes you take a critical look at your own value system. What we see in The Fountainhead is this idea that the root of evil lies in the collective mind. In her novel, Rand depicts a society whose ideas are so vague and they're just like always dictated by someone. And Rourke here embodies individualism and independence. So like in every area of his work and life, he thinks for himself, he judges for himself, and makes decisions based only his own thinking and judgment, which I truly admire. Of course, there are a few antagonists in the novel, people who would do anything to get power, who represent the spirit of collectivism, who conform to popular styles. And the book is just about that, the struggle of any independent thinker against conformity and resistance to the new and untried. And here is a quote which I love and just worship most of all in this novel. To say I love you, one must first be able to say the I. So yeah, this is it. These are the three books which have had the greatest impact on me and my personality. If you've read any of them and have some thoughts on them, or if there is a book which also influenced you a lot, feel free to share it in the comments down below. And thank you so much for watching this video. I hope to see you very, very soon. Bye.